Welcome to the 2023 Convocation at Curry College. So I'm going to ask that everybody stand before uh, we, we start to hear the national anthem, everyone who's able to stand, from a member of our class of 2026, Olivia Silva. Olivia, please come up. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Holy cow, that was amazing. Thank you, Olivia. You may all now please be seated. Oh, you already are. I'm Jay Gonzalez, the new president at Curry College. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I want to welcome all of our new students, the Curry College faculty, staff members, returning students, members of the Curry community, and distinguished guests, I want to officially welcome you to the 2023 Convocation at Curry College. I also I want to note that while Olivia just beautifully sang about the American flag, there are flags on the side of the, the stage here which represent the countries of each of our international students at Curry. We recognize and honor them and wish them a special and warm welcome. So before I offer a few opening remarks, I'd like to introduce Reverend Dr. Ian Meverack the Director of Spiritual Life here at Curry, who will provide us with a centering reflection. Reverend. Good morning. And once again, I want to welcome you all. Welcome to the class of 2027. This is also my first time in a convocation here. I am new, and it is exciting to be here. And it's just joyful to see all of you come into this hall. So I want to welcome you again. And I want to invite us to take a little moment. You could, if you want, close your eyes and just kind of center yourself. And let's take a moment to just breathe together and really be in this space. Really allow yourself to arrive. So I want to invite you to take a nice deep breath. In and then. Feels good to all breathe together. Let's do that one more time. Just take a nice breath in. And in a moment of quiet, 
within yourself, I want to invite you to really touch your intentions, your hopes, the sense of purpose that you carry and that has carried you into this moment. I want you to really feel your personal energy and also this collective energy that we all share as a community gathered here. Just take a moment to feel and know that we're connected and we are really a powerful community together. Everyone here wants you to succeed. Your teachers, the staff, the administrators, your peers, who you don't even really know yet. We all want you to succeed, but most of all, you want this. You know what your time here can mean for your future. And I just want to affirm that for you. I don't know the path that you took to get here and what challenges you had to overcome or what skills and talents that you've cultivated and all the work that you put in, put in to get to this moment. But I know that in one way or another, love had something to do with it. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that love is that force which all of the great religions have seen as a supreme unifying principle of life. So in this moment, I want to invite you to remember the love that brought you here. From your parents, your teachers, your siblings, your friends, and your love and care for yourself. King also said that love is the key that unlocks the door which leads to ultimate reality. So I want to encourage you to love yourself and love the people around you. Look around you. These are the people who you're going to love and they're going to love you. And in doing that, you will do so well here because love is what brings us into alignment. Love brings us into connection and into our purpose and our power. It is such an exciting time to be here at Curry College. You all are especially lucky. We have an amazing new president. We're all excited and energized and feeling united in what we're all about here. We're here to educate and support you in your development as people. And once again, I just want to welcome you and give you this blessing. May your journey here be extraordinary and transformational. And may your experience be grounded in love and full of growth, success, and joy. Thank you, Reverend Meverack. Those were very, uh, they were great centering remarks and a good reminder about the power of love. What a good looking group you are. <laughs> I'm so excited you're all here. I've been sitting around for the last month waiting for you to get here. I'm so excited to see all the faculty. Let's give him a hand. All the returning students, the new transfer students, and yes, all of you out there who are part of our great incoming class of 2027. This is my first convocation at Curry College. And the only other convocation I have ever been to 
is the one I attended my freshman year in college, 34 years ago. I can barely remember what I did five minutes ago, but I remember my convocation. There's something special about the ceremony of it, the tradition and ritual marking the significance of the occasion and etching it into our brains. Something about these funny robes. For all of us, it's the celebration of a new academic year and the chance to welcome our incoming class. But for our new students, it's much more than that. For most, it's the celebration of the beginning of a new and different stage of life. Exposure to a new and broader world of people and opportunities, new learning, new experiences and adventures, a new community, and for many, a new home. It marks the beginning of what will likely be the only time in your life completely and totally dedicated to your personal learning, growth, and exploration. For our new students, Convocation formally calls out the weight of this unique life moment. As I said at the Welcome Weekend event last week, it's a big deal starting college. But it's also a big opportunity. I assured you last week that everyone here at Curry knows it's a big deal and that we will be doing everything we possibly can to ensure you have a rewarding and successful experience here. Our mission is to help you graduate with the tools to succeed in your career and in life, to be good citizens, to be good communicators and critical thinkers, and to feel at home as part of an inclusive and diverse community of learners. We're committed to doing everything we can to deliver on that mission for you. We'll be doing everything we can to support you in pursuing your academic and extracurricular interests, to provide an inclusive, safe, and supportive community where each of you feels you belong, to support your health and well-being, to facilitate your developing lifelong friendships, and we'll be doing everything we can to give you plenty of opportunities to have fun. But an opportunity is worthless unless it's seized. No matter what we do to provide you with opportunities for personal learning, growth, and exploration, only you can decide to take advantage of them. You have agency over your college experience. You control how valuable and rewarding and successful your experience here will be. It's up to you. During the last month, when I was sitting around waiting for all of you, I decided to try calling all of our new students to tell you how excited we were for you to get here and that you're gonna be joining our community. Despite my best efforts and intentions and consistent with what everyone told me when they said I was crazy that I was gonna be able to reach everyone, I ran out of time and wasn't able to call all of you. But I did end up calling 303 of you. I didn't connect with 59. I left voicemails for 143 of you. I spoke with five of your parents who were all lovely people. <laughs> and I was grateful to connect with 96 of you. While virtually all of you said you were a bit nervous about starting college, which is totally normal, you also said you were excited. Some of you talked about being excited to pursue your major and academic interests. Some talked about being excited to live at school. Some are excited to volunteer while at Curry, and others are excited to participate in student government. Some of you said you were excited to develop close relationships with faculty. There you go, faculty. It's pretty great, isn't it? Many, many of you talked about how excited you were to meet new people and make new friends. And one of you told me that you were excited to make your parents proud. 
I was inspired by your ambitions. And I know from these conversations that you want to seize the opportunity. I also know from our conversations that you get what Curry is all about. You get that this is an incredibly special place. You get the unique opportunities available to you as a member of the Curry community. Some of you told me that you decided to come here because of the strong academic program we offer in your chosen major. Faculty, there you go again, that's all you. Some talked about the PAL program and the incredible support it offers. A bunch of you told me that you have a friend or a family member who had a great experience at Curry. A number of the athletes said they chose Curry because they had a positive connection with the coach and the team. One of you on the football team even told me that you, quote, felt the love from Coach Parsons. Many of you said you liked that Curry is a small school with small classes. But the thing I heard most and I heard it from virtually all of you in one form or another, was that Curry just felt like the right fit for you. Many of you said you seemed very interest, that Curry seemed very interested in you and supportive. One of you told me that you appreciated the diversity of the community and that it was comforting to see other people who looked like me. One said she got the vibe that Curry was fun and had a lot of positive energy. Many of you talked about loving the beautiful campus and said it felt homey. You said everyone was so nice and helpful at Curry and that it felt like a welcoming, strong community. It felt like you would be comfortable here and would not be overlooked. It felt like a family. You said it felt like home. I was encouraged that so many of you see and appreciate what I see and appreciate in this place the special, caring, inclusive, and supportive community that it is. The strong community through which we create and help each other seize opportunities to learn, grow, and develop. So I know you want to take advantage of the opportunities available to you, and I know you believe Curry is the right place for you to successfully pursue those opportunities. So here's the question. Will you do so? I hope you will. And I want to put it to you a different way. I hope that you will be Curry. Be Curry. What do I mean by that? That you will be intentional and proactive about your experience here. That you will be present for it. That you will immerse yourself in Curry and seize the opportunities it presents for you. I also mean by be Curry, that you will live up to the values and attributes of the Curry community that make it special. That you will not only be a beneficiary of, but also a valuable contributor to the welcoming, inclusive, caring, and supportive community that drew you to this place. So let me ask you, what are you going to do? Be Curry. Be Curry. Seize the unique opportunities you have here. Participate. Pursue your interests. Explore new interests. Give it your all. What are you going to do? Be Curry. Be Curry. Attend your friends' games and events and performances and cheer them on. Take care of yourself and look out for those around you. What are you going to do? Come on, you can do better than that. Be curry. be curry. Be committed. Be engaged. Be caring and supportive and kind and generous and respectful and curious and adventurous and ambitious and humble. What are you going to do? Be curry. be curry. Take pride. Take pride in being curry. Show your appreciation for others by thanking them for being Curry. Greet your fellow Curry community members with an uplifting reminder to be Curry. We are so excited you have joined the Curry community. Know that we are here for you. We believe in you. 
and we are rooting for you. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Make the best of it. What are you going to do? Be Curry. Be Curry. Thank you. So now it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Ed Cabellan, the Vice President of Enrollment Management, who will present the class of 2027. Ed? Thank you, President Gonzalez, and good morning, members of the platform party, faculty, staff, students, but most importantly, the class of 2027. How are you all doing this morning? Great. My name is Ed Cabellan, and I'm starting my fourth year working here at Curry. And as by way of introduction, I was born in Providence, Rhode Island. Anyone, any of my Rhodey friends here today? Rhodey, what's up? Uh, I'm the firstborn son of immigrant parents from the Philippines, and my first in my family to attend college here in the U.S., where I earned my bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. My family and I have lived in Brockton, Massachusetts the past 19 years. Oh, where am I Bro Brockton at? Where are you at? Excellent. Uh, where my wife teaches second grade in the Brockton public school system, and both my daughters are Brockton High. One's a senior, so getting ready for it, y'all. And uh, the other is a sophomore. I'm starting my 27th fall working in higher education, and I'm excited to welcome each and every one of you to our great community. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. I know you've been busy and spent time getting to know one another a little bit better and making new friends. Thanks to all of you who also joined me in my first lecture. It was great being back in the classroom engaging with all of you. This morning I have the opportunity, I have the honor of presenting some fun facts about the class of 2027. First, the class of 2027 currently has nearly 600 members from 23 US states, 95% of which are from the Northeast, New England, New York, and New Jersey, but also some folks here from Florida, California, Colorado, and Maryland, just to name a few. The closest student lives 2.4 miles away here in Milton, and the farthest lives approximately 8,370 miles away in Vietnam. Many countries are represented, as President Gonzalez noted earlier, but no matter where you come to us from, we are so pleased to have you at your new home here at Curry. I'm proud to say that 42% of the class of 2027 are from diverse backgrounds. 17% of you identify as black or African American, and 15% of you identify as Hispanic. In addition, 33% of this class identifies as the first in their families to attend college. Please know that our diversity center, located right here in the STU, is an outstanding place to meet all students, faculty, and staff, and get the support when you need it. Also, based on what you shared with our admissions team, there are a wide rate of interests among each of your peers, including service, art, dance, video games, hiking, ski, and snowboarding, just to name a few. And I invite each and every one of you to stop by the Student Activities Office at any time and our Student Activities Fair on September 6th to get involved right away and stay active in student organizations, clubs, club sports, so you can continue to meet other Curry students. In addition, 33% of you play varsity sport. Where are my student athletes at? Excellent. We encourage all of you to support our scholar athletes on the field, pitch, court, or ice by attending their games and cheering them on to victory. No matter where you're from, how you identify, or what you're interested in, the college is here to support you every step of the way, academically, through advising and tutoring, engagement through clubs and organizations, activities and events, wellness through mental health, recreational and spiritual support, and financial through financial literacy, education, and financial aid, of course. Ask Alex, our chatbot, anytime if you have any questions during your time here at Curry. On behalf of the entire community, welcome home, and best wishes in a successful journey here at Curry College. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Cabellan. So I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker, Jem Celestin. She is a biology major from the class of 2026, and I just got to say a word about Jem. I've been here a month, and I feel like I've seen Jem about 97 times already. She is everywhere. She was working in the mailroom. She's an RA who is helping people move in. She works in the student center. And the greatest thing about Jem, she's got such a positive attitude. Always smiling, always happy to be here, always happy to help. Clearly a really valuable contributor to our community. So it's a real honor, Jem, to be able to introduce you and welcome you to the stage. Hello everyone, and welcome. I am Jamima Celestin. I grew up just down the street in Mattapan and live in Mansfield, Massachusetts. I'm a second year student, a part of the class of 2026, studying biology. On this campus, we'll run into each other, like President Gonzalez said, in many different places. In the student center, where I'll be in the mill room upstairs, or at the info desk right in front when you walk in, or you might see me as an RA, resident assistant in the halls, or I may be a student advisor. A strong way to get the most out of college is to think of it as your biggest investment. You're investing in yourself. Whether you came here just to stick to taking your classes, or if you plan to get more involved in the activities and jobs made up of Curry, they all help to build you up. When I first came to Curry last year, my plan was to come in, take my classes, and get out. No extracurriculars, no engaging with other students. We came here on a mission, get your degree, and get out, girl. It was possible, but it also was not what happened. Instead, I got a crucial job in the mailroom and started staying here to do my schoolwork after classes. Eventually, I ended up making friends and going to my peers' events and ended up starting a group on campus that I know will create memories and still has memories that I'll remember forever. Allowing myself to engage in these, I was also able to build up the foundation for my life. Curating all of those experiences, knowledge from my professors and peers, and wisdom from all of them that we came here to get at Curry College. There have been countless days where I asked myself if I was in the right place, doing the right thing. Could I be doing more? Am I doing too much? You will all encounter these times where you have to take a look at yourself instead. I assess myself, and then I assess my environment, and then I look at my options. Almost every month I ask myself, how am I doing? What am I doing? Who am I being? Where am I going? Am I okay? And what do I need? This series of questions are similar to a self-help guide or self-identification. Each question will help you decrypt your overall person. They'll help you find you. These questions give you a starting point or they can be an anchor for when you feel as though you're not where or who you want to be. My hope this year for the incoming class is that you will each be able to realize these moments when they happen. Remember that you are good enough and you can thrive here. You will thrive here. By being here, you've already begun your journey. Your steps onto this campus today are also your first layers of the concrete of the foundation of your lives. As you continue those steps this school year, be aware that this process is truly to be taken day by day. So take it one day at a time, doing your best version of your best each day. Be kind and patient to yourselves. Be kind and patient to others. You may never know what the next person is going through. And hanging out, I apologize. You may never know what the next person is going through. But lastly, my biggest suggestion, take it or leave it, but it'll really help you, 
do the work, okay? <laughs> it's literally what you're paying for here at Curry College. So get your money's worth. Even if hanging out or taking an extended nap may seem more enticing, doing your work, getting it done, passing it in on time, knowing all of your material, that's gonna give you way more satisfaction inside. So go on and be great and trust in yourselves. Peace out. Thank you, Jem, for those remarks and for sharing your story. And you are a perfect example of how to be Curry. So it's my pleasure now to introduce a, a member of our faculty, Dr. Dove Conover. She's an associate professor in our School of Nursing, and she's going to speak on behalf of the faculty at Curry College. We have an incredible and dedicated faculty here at this school. And by all accounts, we are fortunate to have Dr. Conover among them. So doctor, please come up. Welcome class of 2027. Thank you for choosing Curry College to further your education. Shortly after accepting the offer to be your faculty speaker at this event, I overheard two young people at a cafe discussing their college admissions experience. One student compared the admissions process to dating, where love letters were admissions essays, and dating apps were where folks were hoping both the college and you swiped right. So thank you for swiping white for us. Hearing those young people discussing their college futures, it led me to think about how different our perspectives are about what college means. As a faculty member and a nurse, I have a different perspective than you might as a first-year college student. To me, the most important aspect of education is being open to new ideas. How we introduce you to concepts and skills that you may or may not have ever seen or ever practiced is through our classes. So while here at Curry College, you're gonna take around 120 credits worth of classes over eight semesters. Yeah. Each credit translates to about one hour of time in class and two hours of homework per week. So let's think about how much time you're gonna be spending to get those new skills and new ideas. So at Curry, the minimum credits you want to take is 12, but we recommend 15 to stay on track to graduate. For those 15 credits, you'll spend about 15 hours a week in class, and then we expect you to be doing 30 hours a week of homework. So that's 45 hours a week devoted to learning these new materials that we have presented to you. This is why I say college is a full-time job, right? So the good news is you get to pick the when and the ways that you spend those 30 hours of homework. I do recommend picking a study time and a method that works for your brain. It's gonna be different for every single one of you. If the thought of all of this leads you to feel anxious or overwhelmed, I do have a potential solution. I'm extending an invitation to all of you to join me on Wednesdays at noon in the chapel for meditation. Uh, the chapel is right up the stairs from here. I lead the Wednesday faculty, staff, and student meditation group. I have found that mindfulness is really important in my own personal journey of lifelong learning. Just like sunscreen, the long-term benefits of meditation have been proven by scientists. One of the benefits is to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So nursing students, you might want to take some notes, okay? Who here wants to share their knowledge of the parasympathetic nervous system, what it does? Yeah? Perfect, yes. It is the rest and digest system. But it also helps with information retrieval and storage. So you can learn new information and then demonstrate your knowledge best when you have that parasympathetic system active. So meditation can help you to turn up that parasympathetic nervous system. 
But we've also got this uh, sympathetic nervous system. Anyone knows what that one does? Take a guess, be brave. Stress response, yes. It's also known as the fight, flight, and freeze system. So if you've ever frozen on a test, that's your sympathetic nervous system kicking in. And it makes it really hard to think clearly because it's trying to save you from a tiger, which is less useful when you're trying to save an, solve an algebra program, a problem, not, not, not as useful. Mine's kicking in right now, but that's okay. So. Today, I'm gonna to teach you a trick to change from that sympathetic into the parasympathetic. You can do this at any time, in any place, during a test, a class, any time that you feel like you're being put on the spot and you need to think. So this technique is called the four, seven, eight breathing technique. So we'll do it a few times to practice, but first let me just describe it to you. So you start by breathing out through the mouth, just emptying your lungs, and then you breathe in through your nose for a count of four. And then you hold for a count of seven. And then you exhale from your mouth for a count of eight. Okay? All right, so we're going to try this together. So everybody, let's inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, inhale. Sometimes the exhale's a little hard, right? So that's it. You've now turned down your sympathetic nervous system and turned up your parasympathetic nervous system. It's that easy. I do have one final piece of advice for you. Stay curious. Curiosity is key to lifelong learning. Curiosity is how you will stay open to learning new things. Curiosity is how you're able to listen and care for persons who are different than you. Studies have shown that when students believe they already know the uh, content of a class, in other words, they're not really curious, they don't master the content very well. So I ask that you stay curious. Expect that you don't know everything there is to know on a topic. Bring your curiosity to class and your professors will love you. Thank you, class of 2027, for your attention today. Stay mindful and curious. Thank you, Dr. Conover. I don't know about you, but I learned a lot. And I feel great after all the breathing we've been doing through this program. So it's now my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Courtney Lee, an alumna from the class of 2017 right here at Curry College, who currently serves as the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope Social Media Lead at NASA at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Pretty cool. In this role, Courtney leads the Influencer Engagement Program and helps manage media campaigns that help connect scientists, engineers, and astronauts to media outlets all over the world. It's a big job, and Courtney is having a big impact. Before this ceremony, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Courtney and having the chance to spend a little time with her and she's a very impressive woman. As members of the Curry community, we are extremely proud of you, Courtney, and we are honored and grateful that you've taken the time to be here with us today. Please join me in welcoming Courtney Lee. Hey. So I want to start by thanking Curry College for allowing me to speak to you all today. I have rewritten the speech so many times this past week. I didn't know how I wanted to start it. I had so much knowledge and information I wanted to share with you guys. So I decided to take a quote from one of the best introductions of all time. So here's a little story all about how my life got twisted 
turned upside down. But I'd like to take a minute to sit right there to tell you how I became the class of 2027's convocation speaker. <laughs> I was trying to get through that without laughing, but it was real hard. That's from Freshmen to Bel Air, if people didn't know. So, my name is Courtney Lee. I am the social media lead and outreach support for NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. And if you were to ask me 10 years ago when I was in y'all's seat back in 2013, if I would be working at NASA, I would have said you guys were from another planet <laughs> but because of the mindset I adopted at Curry of taking chances and never being afraid to ask questions, I am now in a career that I enjoy. While I was writing the speech, I was trying to think back to my convocation, and I don't really remember what was said, but I remember how I felt. I was scared, nervous, I was 800 miles away from my home, and I have family in the area, but I didn't know anyone who was attending Curry. You always hear that college is the start to the rest of your life which is something that is kind of scary. But it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be nervous. Things that are meaningful and important to us are often scary. And sometimes it's not about getting over the fear, but using it to get through whatever you are trying to accomplish. While at Curry, I wanted to make the most out of my experience. Even though it was scary, I wanted to try new things. I won't lie. The first semester, I never left my dorm only to go to classes, and I ate so much ramen that it wasn't until like two years ago that I started eating ramen again. But it was after winter break, I told myself I needed to give it the good old college try. I joined clubs like SGA and student entertainment and events, which was my favorite. I became president my sophomore year and stayed until I graduated. I had jobs on campus at the student center at the front desk, as well as the um, event coordinator, as, and I had a job in the alumni office. I did numerous internships, including Boston 25, and I also got to work on a Super Bowl commercial with Tom Brady, which was a lot of fun. Through all those experiences, I was able to make lasting friendships and connections. After Curry, I want to follow in my advisor's footsteps, Professor Jerry Gibbs, and attended American University to receive my master's in reporting on public affairs with a concentration in broadcast journalism. It wasn't until after I graduated that I realized I didn't want to do that, which was a very expensive lesson learned, but I'm glad I learned it. Um, even though I felt like this wasn't the career for me, I was still applying for TV jobs, because so I thought maybe if I got into the field, I might enjoy it a little bit more. I actually got offered an anchoring position in Michigan, but at the same time, I noticed that NASA had a newsroom position open for their internship. I didn't even know NASA had a newsroom, so I, and the last science class I took was in high school, so I didn't think it would be a good fit, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to try. So fun fact, I couldn't even get through the application process because I just graduated grad school and you had to be an active student to participate in the program. But I didn't want that to deter me from at least trying, so I found the executive producer's email and I emailed him directly with my resume and my website saying I would love this opportunity. The next day he called me and was like, I like your initiative. And he's like, let's figure out another way. So we like pretended I was a little student to get through the website. And then a week later he offered me the position and then nine months later I became full time. And another fun fact is the resume I applied for at NASA was pink because I was in my Elle Woods era, you know? Um, so because of the chances I took, I was able to open a door I didn't know existed. I tell you this story because I hope to inspire you all to not be afraid to try new things. You may succeed, you may fail, but you never know unless you try. Like they say, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll end up amongst the stars. So to close out my TED Talk, I want to leave you with some key advice. Join clubs. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Please wear shower shoes and have fun. Thank you. Shower shoes. Thank you, Courtney, for those inspiring words, your inspiring story, and excellent advice. We now have our last speaker, and we're going to start to do the official stuff the official matriculation of our new class. So our next speaker is our provost, Dr. Bob Shea. And I just, this is the first opportunity where we have the whole community together since Dr. Shea has been appointed formally as our permanent provost here at Curry College. So I want to just invite everyone to congratulate Bob. And with that, 
I'm going to welcome Bob to the podium, and he's going to take it from here. Dr. Shea. Good morning. Welcome to President Gonzalez, Dr. Conover, Ms. Lee, Ms. Celestin, our faculty and staff, our marshals, student leaders, and most of all to you, the class of 2027. As provost, it's my great pleasure to officially welcome each and every one of you to our learning community. I thank you for your participation in this, these convocation exercises today and for celebrating this important milestone. For many of you, I expect that this is a day of powerful competing emotions. The energy created by pride, happiness, and excitement, conflicting with a little anxiety about the transition to college life, making new friends, taking on new academic challenges, and for some of you, being away from, at least temporarily, your loved ones. Joining you today are the dedicated faculty and staff and student leaders who are committed to mentoring you along the way. Don't hesitate to reach out, ask questions, seek their guidance, and make suggestions. They are here for you. You may be asking yourself, what's so special about this ceremony? And how long will it last? I want to shed a little light on the former, and with regard to the latter, I promise, not much longer. Uh, President Gonzalez said, noted that we were standing up here in these, these funny robes. Um, the next time you all will see us in these funny robes, you also be robed, and you'll pass across the stage to receive your degree. This marks the start of your academic career, and it will be bookended by your commencement four years from now. A little history on convocation. This is, our convocations date back to the 14th century and they were originally used to describe important religious gatherings and then adopted by colleges and universities to celebrate academic ceremonies, such as the beginning of a school year. As you have now all witnessed, at Curry College, our convocation begins with a procession of our new class down from the upper campus and into this building, cheered by members of the faculty and staff. That welcome is genuine, and it symbolizes the spirit of community here at Curry as well as showcasing, showcasing the wealth of people and resources who are here to help you succeed. And it's that community, these partnerships, that I want to focus on this morning. Your first official week has begun. First classes are just a few hours away, and the writing of a new and exciting chapter of your life has begun. In the coming days and weeks, you'll begin to gain a deeper sense of yourself, why you are here, the strengths that you bring to this enterprise, and the opportunities for growth that await you. You also gain a sense of what it means to belong and contribute to the Curry College community, a community where everybody matters and where members support one another. Learning is central to all that we do as a college, and while we learn together, new and returning students, faculty and staff, we are in the process of building community and caring about one another. This is hard work that requires patience, humility, and honesty. Being a community member requires an intentional investment and action. True community members don't stand by while a peer struggles with any of life's challenges. They reach out, offer empathy, they intervene, and they support one another. The call to community requires all of us to listen and understand each other to welcome and value all expressions of diversity and identity, and to respect and value the dignity of each individual member of the community. You all just heard some sage advice offered by one of your peers, Jem Celestin. And as she so personally described, engagement is the key to success, not just in college, but indeed in life. And not just for your own achievement or material success, but as a mechanism by which we imbue our lives with meaning and purpose. This requires us to stretch, to try new things, and to take risks. You will no doubt hear many who will offer you advice along the lines of college is what you make of it, and you'll only get out of it what you put into it. And while undoubtedly true on one level, without further investigation, that advice is flawed. Participation is necessary, but not sufficient for meaning making. 
Our individual narratives require us to continually take stock of who we are, what our strengths are, and in what ways do we need to grow in order to achieve our dreams. You just heard that kind of, of reflection offered by one of your peers. Jem's words powerfully tell her story, but if you listen closely, her, star her story guides a path to meaning and success that we want you all to travel. As a community, we continuously work to help all of our members to thrive, to be their best selves, to support their successes, and to achieve their dreams. To be successful in doing so requires that we collectively work to create a sense of belonging for every member of our community. I want to assure you that you will have many partners here to help to build that sense of belonging. You saw many of them as you entered today. As provost, my primary work is the oversight of the academic programs and to help coordinate the work of our exceptional faculty. On behalf of those faculty, I further extend our warm welcome to you today. They are here to share their knowledge and expertise and to partner with you. I urge you to take full advantage of the resources they, pre they present. Your success is their success, and they're eager to support your growth and development. But you cannot be passive recipients of their efforts. Active engagement, purposeful participation, and ongoing reflection are required. In a recent speech I gave to another audience, I highlighted the fact that seeking a college education is an act of hope. You and your family invest your time and your money. You share a belief that these investments will change your lives. And for the most part, that hope manifests itself through thoughts of career aspirations. And we're we're, we are here to share that hope with you and for you, and we are poised to help you get there. But where is there? You will be a generation of college graduates who are likely to have many jobs over the course of your professional lives, many of which have not been invented yet. So your story will continue to evolve well beyond your time at Curry. Our task is to prepare you both for the immediate and long-term success. Lifelong learning, often stated as a goal of a liberal arts education, is no longer a luxury. It's a necessary survival skill. Your Curry education will help you hone those skills and habits of mind to be successful in a rapidly changing environment. But again, active engagement and reflection are necessary for that success. Once again, I welcome you to our learning community. I look forward to seeing you on campus, to working with you, to celebrate your many successes, and I eagerly await your unfolding narratives. Thank you. And now, here's where you get to come in. I'll ask Jem Sellison to join me back at the podium. Will the members of this year's Curry College class please rise? As provost, I formally accept you as new matriculants and members of the Curry College community. Would Jem Sellison please administer the college oath? As a member of the class of 2027, I respect all members of the Curry College community. As a member of a community of diverse learners and educators, I value intellectual, racial, and cultural diversity as key to understanding, communication, and advancing the common good. I seek to gain and apply knowledge in pursuit of truth and wisdom. I understand that Curry College is committed to developing effective communicators with reflective and critical thinking skills, supporting my personal and professional goals. I accept the responsibility to actively participate in the intellectual life of Curry College as I take advantage of the opportunities ahead. Thank you. Mr. President, it's my pleasure to present the Curry College Class of 2027. <laughs> Dr. Shea, 
Members of the Curry College community, it is my pleasure to recognize Curry's newest student class, the class of 2027. Give yourselves a hand. I look forward to your membership in the Curry community, to your success both as students and as alums.